Hey everybody, Dave here. Just a quick little uh, public service announcement in regards to this week's episode. If you noticed last week, the sound for both me and Greg were out of sync. And that in part has to do with uh, the fact that my computer's gra independent graphics card got destroyed a few weeks back and um, it's not been replaced. So if uh, this particular announcement is okay and the sound synced up great, Maybe I've got something, but I won't know. You won't see it until maybe next week or the week before, depending on how things go. If uh, if not, well, I'm going to come up with something else. But I just wanted you to know that the sounds out of sync with the video. If you're listening to the podcast, that does not affect you any. I just wanted to to let you know because the amount of programs that I have to run at the same time, I think, is just a little bit much for the onboard graphics to handle. Even though it's a 12 gig PC, it, it, if for memory that should be okay, but it is what it is, right? Okay, I just wanted to let you know. Enjoy the show. One, hey everybody, Dave here. How are y'all doing tonight? Last week, two weeks ago, maybe even I don't know. Two weeks from now, it's just insane. Podcasting and YouTubing is all time travel. It's all mind bending. Yes. It is the 7th of July at this point. It's still the 23rd of June for me and Greg. Shh. Don't tell anybody. How are you uh, doing tonight, Greg? Gonna, uh, I was going to say, I've been in here for a week and uh, desperately need a shower. And, uh, two weeks. It's been two weeks. You're supposed to be yeah. leaving. You were supposed to have left for a trip already. I know. Uh, my wife is just uh, wondering. Uh, in fact, my whole family, friends are all wondering where I am. Uh, still haven't thought to look into the garage, which, uh, you know, you would think would be the first place I would look. Yeah, like you would have thought they would have looked like last week when you didn't come in by, you know, 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm very hungry, though. Yeah. Gotta love batch recording. Anyway, <laughs> what are we smoking tonight, Greg? Are we smoking the same thing we were smoking last week, or have you changed? Because I haven't. I'm still smoking last week's pipe. Yes, I'm still smoking CMD's uh, stovepipe in uh, my Father's Day. Uh, that's not the type of pipe it is, just when I got it. Uh, the Rossi, uh, Rossi Billiard. Yes, and I'm still smoking my 7 LA Deluxe Milano with some Orlick Dark Strong Kentucky in it. And I'm only about yeah. half done. So this is probably going to make the whole episode. I've got another pipe loaded here. I guess maybe I might have my first pipe for Friday night loaded already. Yes, and uh, I have a couple of pipes uh, waiting and moving uh, when this one is inevitably done. Yes, I'll, I'll just show everybody since I've got it here for my second pipe. If I get to it, I'll be smoking this nice clay pipe that my kids got me for my birthday or Christmas. One of the two. I can't remember which. But just recently, I haven't had it a year yet. Nice little clay cutty with a vulcanite stem on it. And in it, I'm smoking something. Tobacco. I say something in tobacco because th this is the jar right here. and This is the label for what used to be in the jar. And there's nothing on the top. There's no label inside. I forgot to label the damn jar. I don't know what's in here. But I kept it, so it must be good. And uh, if I get to it, uh, which I probably will, uh, I have this Nordic freehand that I have here. Nice. With, uh, uh, CND's uh, Morley's Best. That's another unicorn pipe of mine. The getting a Nording freehand. freehand. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. have a Nording. I got the compass sitting over there, but... Uh, I like to look at the freehands. They're, they're, just, they're just unique. Yeah, you know, like they... Uh, I don't know. It's definitely a pipe that I don't smoke all the time, but uh, it, it uh, for as kind of like big as they are, like it, they actually feel quite comfortable in the hand. 
because the uh, like the sides are pretty contoured for like thumbs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're we're still going through a period of mic adjustment, and I think you got to offset a little bit too much because every so often you move into into position and it sounds really good for like a second. Uh oh. Oh, that that might be better. Okay, I will I will try to <laughs> to stay here and not. Yeah, you're gonna have you you you're gonna have to get used to that. You gotta be close enough, and you can't move much, because these these mics they don't they don't pick up sound very well. Yeah, no, I might have to switch from uh, my computer rolly chair to uh, something with actual like uh, that doesn't roll around very much and lock myself in place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it like like we said last week. A few minutes ago in real time it's just a learning curve I've I, I move around a lot too but I've learned to when it's time to talk I've learned to be right where I need to be <laughs> it, it, this all reminds me back when I was in college I was taking a uh, a course I, I don't remember what the course was for my uh, communications uh, uh, degree but uh it was something that had to deal with uh where we had some experience uh working in our broadcast room mm -hmm. and we each kind of had to put on some sort of like uh video project uh right where we each kind of took a turn on the stage and uh they record us well, like it was like a tv news broadcast right and for my turn, when everyone was kind of like taking their turns on, on the camera, you know, editing booth, uh, uh, for mine, it actually took the entire class, and I think that everyone else had to kind of, we weren't a very big class, we were like five people mm -hmm. in, in this class, uh, and everyone else had to unfortunately do theirs, I think, the next week, but or the next day, but uh, the chairs that they gave me and uh, my partner for... Uh, to work with were uh had they stayed in place but they swiveled gotcha and as we recorded and, and tried to say our lines and stuff because we we're, we're trying to remember things right we were unconsciously going like this back and forth fidgeting and uh, uh it wasn't until after that i realized we did that once we, it was too late to do anything but i was just like oh that looks so bad Yeah, well, at least we're not uh, actually professionally recording, so, well, kind of. But, you know, we're, we're not producing for TV or anything like that, or for Marks, so it's all good. That's true. Yeah, but uh, how about, uh, you know, for this episode, we're going to do uh, Bob Pipe's Adventure that should be uh, fun. Yes, we're we we just decided like five seconds ago that uh, we're going to talk about what we look for in a pipe. Like when well, you're looking on eBay, or you're you know you're in the pipe shop and you you've got all these brand new pipes screaming, "Buy me, buy me now!" And uh, you know what? You you can spend anywhere from fifty to five thousand dollars, depending on what the store has in stock. What do you buy? How do you determine how much a pipe's worth? What are your requirements? Yeah. That is what we're looking at today. Yes. Has this ever happened to you? Have you ever gone to a pipe show or a pipe shop and seen all the pipes up on the rack or spread out on a table and uh, have a limited budget and not know which pipe to pick? Well, then you've come to the right place because we're going to talk about that, I guess. Yes, we're definitely going to turn around, turn turn around, and talk about that. Mm -hmm. we're going to take a one hundred eighty from talking about cartoons and talk about something adult. Yes, pipe smoking, which some yes. people would say probably the cartoons is more mature than pipe smoking, but they don't listen to us. Well, they Not might, at all. unless we were talking about something like Popeye or something kind of more related. You mean Popeye hasn't been canceled yet? No, not yet. No. Uh, I'm surprised. Yeah. It's surprising. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, but uh, the funny thing, you know, with this is that uh, everybody's tastes are different. You know, you have one person that has a very, uh, you know, very eclectic taste, and then you have another person that uh, only collects bulldogs. Uh, I know um, there's some some people out there they love the um, Sabinelli 302 fat author shape. And uh, that's all they collect is just different versions and variations of the Salvinelli 302. I personally would kind of get bored with that, but uh, you know, hey, like if that's what they truly enjoy, then who am I to, to say that they're they're doing it wrong? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. The only ones I would say are kind of doing it wrong would be people that only buy something like uh, uh, the Briar Cigar, because, uh, like, why? <laughs> that, that's one of those pipes where, like, if I ever uh, ended up with that from, like, uh, a grab bag or something, I would uh, throw that up on eBay or trade that to somebody <laughs> for, for something else. Just so everybody's aware, a Briar Cigar looks something like this Cobb Cigar, just made out of Briar, not Corn Cobb. And made by the same person, as a matter of fact. It's a it's yeah. a Morgan pipe. Yeah, and I love Morgan pipes. Uh, don't get me wrong; like I, I really like uh, Bone uh, his Bones line and also his Blackjack line. Uh, I'd love to own something from Blackjack a Blackjack line one day. Just uh, the the Briar cigar, just not my thing. And um, I'd like to smoke my. Uh, my Cobb cigar on occasion. It's just kind of fun, you know? That's actually one of the things that I, I look at when I'm going to buy a pipe. Is it a fun pipe to have? Like, I mean, seriously, look at this thing. It, it's a really long, thin corn cob with, uh, with the Morgan pipe symbol on it and Missouri Meerschaum on it because it was made in collaboration with them. As a matter of fact, this pipe came out of, uh, this was his entry in a Cobb Foolery contest. No, I mean, they're definitely unique. I mean, that's why, I, like, I love, uh, even though I don't smoke it very often, I love uh, enjoying my uh, uh, Gord Calabash. It's just, uh, like, it almost feels like a prop, but it's a real pipe. and uh, makes you want to uh, don a deer stalker and solve some mysteries. Yeah, speaking of mysteries, what happened to the music? I didn't turn uh -oh. it on. That's what happened to the music. Of course, as always, when I, I mention that, you who are listening to the podcast and even the video will not realize until I say something that I turned didn't turn the music on because I'll have put music in the background. Makes me think sometimes I should just not say anything and just keep going and just turn the music on. But I never well, do that. It, well, at least it gives you like a point of uh, reference. It does. That at about 12 minutes and a half in, I turn the music on and now I've got to cover about 11 and a half minutes of music. Thank goodness I have a backup of a bunch of non-copyrighted music that I can just dip into and... Uh, Fill it up. Thank you, YouTube. You're welcome. So, what about you, Greg? Like I, I mentioned, that fun is one of the things that I look for. Like a fun shape. What about you? What, what's one of the things that you look at when you're trying to do a pipe and buy a pipe? Yeah, for me, like I, I tend to away, tend to stay away from. Uh, more extreme kind of shapes uh but, you know like when i'm scrolling through ebay or if i'm at a pipe show or, or at an antique shop and they have a good selection of pipes mm -hmm. i'll uh, take a look uh, obviously if it's ebay or uh antique store the first thing i'm looking at is uh, is the pipe in good condition uh a couple of uh antique store visits ago i went to one that uh in general is a good uh antique store 
but uh, I've ne- I had never seen pipes there. Uh, okay. This was the first time I, I found them there, but like all of them were in terrible condition. Like, uh, you know, bite marks that went through the, the stem, uh, bowls that were just like, it's like you, whenever they were done with the pipe, they just went to a block of cement and just started like uh, hammering it. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Just uh, felt really bad for them because I, I just <laughs> I don't feel like there's any chance to be able to restore any of those. Okay. Um, um, I have a suggestion now for, for that mic. Something that I just discovered about this particular brand. Angle it the opposite way that you have then you have it. Don't have it pulled back away from you. Point the top towards you a little bit. Like this? A little too much. This? A little more. Back towards me. I say back towards me because that's what it looks like. <laughs> back towards your phones. Right. Okay. Sorry, one second. No worries. Like this? Perfect. Okay. That's good. If you can make it stay there. Yeah, no. Um, oh. Yeah. I may have asked for the impossible here. No, I just have to remember not to... Uh, I don't think there's a way for me to keep it from really... Uh, like, I, it stays in place okay. I just have to remember not to... Uh, bump into it at all. That's really weird. It, doesn't the thing um, like right here have a little twisty thing to tighten it up? Let's see. Well, that does, but uh, the black parts that uh, connected uh, does not. Yes, it uh, does. I'm looking right at it. With this? Yeah. Uh, it does not move. No, no, no. Slide your hand. This? Yeah, that's what keeps that no, thing no, in this place. This is for the hinge here. Yeah. Uh, for it going up and down. Oh, I see. You don't have it set up the same way I do. You're, you're, okay. Okay, we're going to have to figure that out later. Well, as long as I don't touch it, it'll stay in place. Okay, okay. It's cool. I was just sitting there and going because I heard a significant difference when I moved uh, the mic into a different position here and... Yeah. Uh, I thought, hey, maybe we should uh, get yours a little bit different, different position there too. It's just weird. It's one of those For things sure. I never knew before. It's like it's like the microphone, the actual the uh, thing is in the top, in the bendy part. Right. I always thought this was a side address mic, but maybe it's not. Oh well. We'll, we'll we'll get it figured out. Yeah, no problem. Anyway, back to pipes. Yes. Like I mentioned this just before we uh, we went on air or on recording anyway. That uh, one of the things that I look at specifically when I'm looking at, you know, trying to buy a pipe from eBay is the shipping. How much is that going to add to the cost of the pipe? Because for me, if I'm looking at buying a pipe that isn't brand new and I want to say spend no more than $50 on the pipe, I have to remove the shipping cost from that $50 before I make any decisions as to what I'm going to do. And uh, so, you know, you want to spend, say, 50 bucks on a pipe that looks like this. You remove $25 right off the top, the way eBay's got their shipping right now. Yeah. Maybe more. But that really factors in for me because I'm 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 on quite the limited budget and 
I want to get some nice pipes and I need to do it estate wise but you know when the estate market is so shipping heavy it really makes it hard for sure And it's also sad that I can bid on a pipe in France and, you know, maybe pay $10 Canadian for shipping and get a pipe sent to me from France on eBay when right next door I have to spend 20 to $30 on shipping and will probably lose out on the pipe I want because I can only spend 10 bucks on the pipe. I have to spend the rest on the shipping. Right. Now that does make it uh, very complicated. But Which it is, is why... a, but it is a factor that you have to take into consideration when you're buying pipes. Oh, for sure. And you know, like when I I sold a couple of my video games a couple months ago to go towards uh, buying my bagpipe, and uh, with that, I just uh, put the. Uh, shipping and, and everything to just be like, you know, just uh, a U.S. bidding only just so that I don't, uh, not that you know, I didn't like doing that, but just to make things easy for me and, and figuring all that stuff out. Yeah. That's, that's the thing, especially even when you're selling, too, because I've sent, I've sent a few things. A couple of them to you. Mm-hmm. And it's it's interesting. I can spend the same amount of money, you know, you know, depending on the size of package, of course, and and weight that that factors in. But basically, I've sent you pipes now a couple times, and for the same amount of money, I could have sent it from here to you, or from here to California, or from here to British Columbia. And it would have cost me the same amount no matter where I sent it. Even funnier, on some things, even though I'm in the same country as British Columbia, sometimes it's actually cost me more to send it in my own country than it does to send it to yours. So strange. Very strange. I think for uh, let's see, for me, uh, a lot of what I look for in uh, when I'm pipe shopping, like uh, if it's you know if I'm at like say the Chicago Pipe Show, uh, you know I'm going through the state uh, you know pipe tables and everything, and for me a lot of it just depends on the shape, like especially if I'm there's a specific shape that I'm looking for. Um, or a, a brand. Uh, like the first year I picked up a uh, a GBD bent uh, bulldog because I, for years, had wanted to pick up a GBD. And uh, uh, that was like the first one that uh, I could just, that, that I really liked the shape of. And it, uh, it had a, a really just nice look to it. Yeah. Uh, it was very, very affordable. And I didn't have to go into a betting war for it, so uh, uh, I just went for it right then and there. And then uh, with the two Savinelli's that I picked up at the 2019 Chicago Pipe Show, uh, for that one I just I just couldn't pick between the two. And I, I just grabbed them both. I ended up getting a, the price knocked down a little bit. But uh, with that, you know, I just, I wanted to add a bit more Savinelli's to my uh, mm -hmm. pipe rack. And uh, both of them, you know, like, with, with one that's really become, like, one of my all-time favorites, you know, it has, like, a, a little bit of green on it. And green was just uh, not a color that uh, I really had on any of the pipes. And, uh, but it, it just looked nice, so I, I went for it. So sometimes it, it can be like, is there something that I don't have that uh, interests me? Uh, 
uh, when I picked up uh, my Father's Day pipe, I actually kind of considered for a moment picking up uh, uh, an Impal from the same line. And even though, like, I have the one Impal for you, this one I think was a bit smaller. Uh, but uh, it just looked really nice. Uh, so a lot of it comes from, you know, is it a brand that I'd like to kind of explore more from? That, that I don't have any of, uh, like, like the Brigham you gave me. Like for years, I've been looking for Brigham, and that's the first one that I finally got. And uh, uh, I know that if I was in, you know, at a pipe show looking at, you know, the state lines, uh, I would definitely keep my eye out for a nice looking Brigham. Yeah. Yeah, and the ones you really want to look for. If you're looking for the Made in Canada ones, that's usually the ones I, I look at. The one you have is Made in Canada. When you take it apart, you'll notice the tenons like made of aluminum or some sort of metal. They're the ones that are made in Canada. Um, they've recently, in recent years, switched to using Delrin tenons. And you really can't tell the difference between the, that tenon and uh, the Vulcanite or whatever they're using for or the acrylic that they're using for their their mouthpieces at this point but that's what they switch to and uh, some people I know are by are finding old uh, Brigham pipes that are no longer in use just so they can get the metal part out so they can have the Delrin tenons replaced Ooh. with the metal That's a surefire way to tell if it's been made in Canada. So if it's got that aluminum tenon in it, unless somebody's had it replaced, it is a Canadian pipe made pipe. Also, they are stamped made in Canada versus made in Italy. Is that where they're being made now? Yeah, I've got one um, somewhere. Oh, it's right behind me. It's right here. This pipe is uh, only about three years old, and it was uh, made in Italy from the Mountaineer line, which I believe are still made in Italy. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't know that. A, a lot of what I'll avoid, uh, I avoid small pipes. Uh, or short pipes. Uh, I just, I don't like nose warmers really. Uh, I found that I also don't like when pipes are a little bit too long. Uh, like I, at the 2018 show, I picked up a, a Sassini pipe, and uh, that's a brand that, like, I, at, like, the pipe itself is really good, but I would probably, if it would just had an inch less on it, it would be perfect for me, but it just is, uh, it's almost like a church warden uh, for me. And, uh, you know, like, that's not, like, I don't dislike church wardens, but uh, that, that just means that I just don't uh, get to smoke it quite as often. Right. So like this one here, this uh, this cob, like it's about seven inches. So this would be about your 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 main length, like your your biggest that you'd want to go. Really, is about this long. It's about the same length as a biggest favorite. Yeah, definitely none of those like uh, German pipes where they're like they go from like the floor all the way up to uh, uh, where you're sitting. And that you see on like some beer steins and, and whatnot. Yeah, that that's what you call go big or go home, and I'll just go home. Yeah, just a, a little too a little too complicated for me. <laughs> yeah. I for me another thing I look for is something you unique about the pipe. Like you were saying earlier about uh, the color on one pipe is what drew you to it. Mm -hmm. 
I have this little pipe here. Nice little brandy. Nothing extremely remarkable about this brandy. You can't probably see it here very well, but it's labeled here the Country Squire. It came from Jackson, Mississippi from the Country Squire tobacconist. I can get brandies here in Canada. Probably cheaper than what I paid for this pipe after shipping and all the stuff that went into it. Not that I regret buying the pipe from John David. It's, it's a great little pipe. But it was the fact that it's labeled the Country Squire that interested me and why I bought that pipe. And that's it. I can't get yeah. that here. <laughs> you know, I, I think back to uh, when I decided that I was going to smoke a pipe and I was looking to buy my, my very first pipe. Uh, since I didn't have any, you know, pipes that I inherited or uh, you know, someone there to kind of walk me through it. I was just looking for like, what would be, uh, I, I really wanted a pipe that to me looked like just a classic looking pipe. Um, and I, I, I ended up going with Peterson because I think, I think probably Ren and Stimpy might've uh, influenced <laughs> me with this. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, with one of the characters who, uh, you never saw his hut, like his face or his head you saw the pipe that dangled from uh, where his head would be. Okay. And uh, for me, it, it, that kind of just gave the image of what a pipe should look like. I where see. it was like I brown and brown wood, black stem with a, kind of like a white or silver kind of uh, uh, band in the middle. And uh, like a lot of Peterson's pipes uh, kind of have that look. And uh, the author that I picked uh, just had that look, and uh, I'm not really sure, even sure why I went with uh, the author rather than like a billiard or anything. But uh, uh, I think the border bent to it uh, appealed to me, and uh, that's why I, I went with it. Where because I I really like pipes that have just a uh, a little bit of a uh, bend to that. Yeah, those are those are those are good. Those are good pipes to have. Like this one's got that little bend to it, the quarter bend. Mm -hmm. So that it's a nice easy pipe to smoke. It's it's not straight, but it, it it's not bent either. But some bent pipes are fun. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, this was the other pipe that I went with, and uh, it's definitely got a, a bent to it. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to branch out and add more uh, bent pipes to my uh, uh, to my pipe rack. And and actually, there was a pipe that I was considering at the point that uh, I hadn't smoked in over a year or two uh, that I had originally put into my uh, pile of pipes that I was going to sell, but. Uh, I just said it was a Kamoi, a coachman, and I ended up uh, just pulling it back and, and putting it back on my back because it was, uh, you know, three-fourths spin and uh, just a, a nice pipe. And I, I just decided that, uh, you know, really there was nothing wrong with it. I think I was just... Uh, you know, looking for, for pipes to kind of uh, to move out. But, uh, you know, I, I had a second opinion on it, and uh, I'm glad that I uh, I did because, it you know, it is a, a nice little pipe. Excellent. Good stuff. And if price is simply just... You, if you're just not willing to spend a ton of money on a pipe, there's always the cob. Mm -hmm. As you can get... A lot of good cobs for like 25 bucks if you're in America. For sure. And that's uh, not an thing, unreasonable price. No, no, not at all. Yeah, especially if you get to go to, uh, you know, the ac actual Missouri Missouri, uh, Missouri Mearsham factory. Because they have just a lot of cool uh, stuff there to uh, to go through. 
Yes, they do. I don't know from personal experience, but I've seen enough pictures to know. Yeah. That's one place I want to go someday. Absolutely. I think one thing I, I'm kind of doing now in, in my pipe search, like, uh, I spend a lot of time uh, collecting Petersons, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I still like them a lot. And uh, uh, I would still, you know, if I see a Peterson that I really like, uh, I'm, I'm going to go for it. But uh, my, my goal now is to uh, avoid, uh, kind of lay back on picking up Petersons and kind of focus on other brands a bit more. Same with Stanwell. I have a, a good amount of Stanwells. Uh, I'm happy with them. Uh, I don't feel like I really need to pick up another one unless it's like a really interesting kind of data shape. Um, Sabinelli's though, I, I think I I really like it, especially because a lot of them are these like thin kind of pipes, and then you have uh, you know that like this uh, this Rossi here, which is made by uh, Savinelli. Like it's got uh, you know a, a chunky shank to it but uh like now i'm looking at brands that i i don't know like uh uh like check um and that, that that's the main one uh parker hardcastle done hell of course but uh you know that's a. Uh, that's a pipe dream, uh, but um, Chi. Mm -hmm. I don't know if um, Japanese pipes necessarily uh, like I. I wouldn't be opposed to looking at them, but they're not high on my list. They're also pretty pretty expensive, from what I've seen. Like the truly Japanese ones. Oh, for sure. Like a, like not the artisan ones. Like the. Uh, the. The one main Japanese brand I'm, I'm blanking on the name. Sugi. Yeah, I, I would look at that. Uh, and they're not, and they're pretty. No, Sugi's got some res, some some affordable, good-looking pipes. Right. But in a nutshell, that pretty much covers what we would, uh, at least some of, not all of what we would look at when we're looking to buy new pipes, used pipes, or just pipes in general. Yeah. And um, well, all I, the only other piece of advice I have for somebody who may be listening to this episode somehow, you found it, and you're a new pipe smoker, buy what you like. Don't worry about what other people think. Oh, for sure. Um, my, I, would, I would advise um, definitely don't be afraid to uh, try different pipes, um, like uh, different pipe styles. Like, uh, it's really it's through trial and error that you discover like what you like and what you don't like. Absolutely. Uh, cause even though, yeah, because even though like that, uh, my first pipe was a Peterson 408 author. Um, I haven't picked up another author since, and uh, that's really. Uh, the only author I kind of plan on owning, and that's not that I don't, you know, dislike the shape or anything, but uh, it's just not. Uh, I, I'm just happy with that one. I don't think I would want another. Um, and then, you know, like a, a different kind of pipe that I'm interested in is uh, apple, like out the apple shape. And originally, like that was one that I just wasn't impressed with, but. Uh, now, whenever I do my uh, eBay searches, I uh, that's usually one of the first ones that I look up, uh, besides Lovitz and Canadians. Oh, speaking of pipes, I was on eBay just before we started recording tonight, and uh, put a bit in on the Bing's, on the, on the Bing's favorite, which. Unfortunately, everybody, I can't tell you whether I won it or not because it's still three days before the auction actually ends, but you're hearing this two weeks later. Damn time travel <laughs> I, again. 
I was about to say don't don't tell them because they might be able to bid on it, but then <laughs> it's just no, they won't. By now, by now it'll be too late. <laughs> by the time the people hear the first episode, I mentioned it in it'll already been the auction will already been over for three days. So it, it's fine. I can tell them, <laughs> but it, it's not not to do with the Bing's favorite. It was a Dunhill that I found because I saved a search on my eBay, where I, it automatically searches for Dunhills. And I found one. The bid was pretty reasonable. But there there was a reason for that. This Dunhill. This poor, poor Dunhill. Um, no, I can't use that one. It's not the right shape. Oh, this will work. Okay, so we got this uh, cob here. This is what it looks like. Fairly well used, but not too used. But this was a used Dunhill, like obviously well loved. But instead of a bull being, a, I figured it the bull on this Dunhill was supposed to be about this size. It was chopped here. I wish I was kidding. Like I was looking at a Dunhill for that price. I started flipping through the pictures and oh look, it actually says Dunhill stamped right into the thing. It's a Dunhill. And then I got to the, and then I saw the, you know, the, the picture that were, where they're showing you this part of the ankle, and I'm sitting going, something doesn't look right. Something just doesn't look right with this pipe. And then I got to this angle, and I could see that half the bowl was missing. Like somebody chopped it down to make it like a, a pot or a, or they chopped it down just to make it, they, they, they didn't like how big the bowl was. They wanted a smaller bowl, so they chopped this Dunhill down. I, I'm getting angry just No, I know, questions. right? <laughs> Yeah, like, it makes me wish there was, like, the pipe police, because they and, would and, definitely... Yeah, and it's not like I could go on and say, Hey, what did you do to this pipe? Because most likely the seller didn't do anything to this pipe. It's one he came on, and it's just trying to move. You know, you experiment with cobs, because cobs are versatile, and, uh, you know, like, they're... If you met, you know, kind of mess it up or whatever, it's not the end of the world. But to do that to your Dunhill, you're you're going to pipe jail. Yeah, I know. You know, they they, they say the uh, they say in uh, Dante's Inferno that the seventh circle of hell is reserved for traitors and mutineers. But what the, the there is one circle of hell they didn't mention. That was the eighth circle of hell. And that's for the Dunhill mutilators. Uh, that would be the tenth circle, because uh, there was uh, nine circles. Oh, was there nine? I'm, yeah, I'm not that familiar with it. Okay, so then the tenth, uh, the tenth circle of hill then is yeah. For, I, for I, the had to, I had to read uh, in for Dante's Inferno in my uh, college English class. Uh, great, great book, by the way. Um, very fascinating, especially if you find stuff like uh, Heaven and Hell interesting. Um, yeah, no, uh, that, there would definitely be a, a specific, uh, circle. that might be a fun topic one day. Like what are the, what are the different circles of a uh, pipe hell? <laughs> the different circles of pipe hell. Yeah, we might get canceled for that too. Who knows? Well, you but, know what? They could, they can just go cancel themselves. Yeah, pretty much. But anyway, I think, uh, we've, uh, Given the people enough to chew on for this week, so. Or would you say you've, we've given them enough to put in their pipe to then smoke it? Yeah, you could say that, but it doesn't work quite right. But anyway. True. With all that being said, if you want to follow us throughout the week, you can always do so on Twitter. I'm at Dr. Alien 201 The show is at Syndicated Pipe. Greg, where can the people find you? You can find me on Twitter at the underscore Badger Piper, as well as Instagram at the Badger Piper. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I'm also there, Dr. Allen 101. And if you want to follow the show, it's not under the show's name. I tried that and it wouldn't go. So it's Dr. Alien 201. Also, we have a Facebook page now where you can find us. It's Dr. Alien 201 Productions. Or you can find this show and anything else that I happen to put out, because I always tag 
Dr. Alien Productions at the end of the video. So, I guess that's the brand. And also, you can email us at reverseflashtime at gmail.com, even though nobody ever does. But I can't shut it down. Because if you recall a few weeks ago, I said I was going to, but then realized I couldn't because then I wouldn't be able to put up the podcast. Yes. So it's, uh, it's going to stick around that way. But that all being said, we'll wish you good smokes, great entertainment, and we will see you next week. Chat with you later. <laughs>